Hey fellow Fault Warriors, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you full health, max DPS, heavy gunner build. Yes, I did it, I finally did it and surprise surprise, it actually works. But head and criticals, there we go. A couple tricks was required to achieve that, but it happened to be possible and I'm really happy about it. As well, if you're curious how it will perform, solo versus endgame bosses, I do plan to do couple runs on the next Twitch livestream, so you can check it out. Now, let's go over details, what's important, how this build work, and what do you need to pull it off. So first, the special distribution for this build is 15 strength, 3 perception, 5 endurance, 9 charisma, 6 intelligence, 8 agility and 10 luck. And this is before the legendary perk application. And here are the legendary perks for this build. I would say this build is possible from at least mid game. So at least level 200 plus if you want to pull this game. Absolute minimum is plus 10 to your special from legendary perks. Everything else is just added bonus, but 10 you must have. So level 200 plus to achieve that. I have a little bit more because I have luck, intelligence and agility max out. That's plus 15 to special. I have master infiltrator for my convenience. And then I have follow through and taking one for the team. This is because I want to be absolute max DPS. Obviously, if you play on the team and someone else will carry those cards, you can basically play without those. So this is really light. I would say for max DPS build, the requirements to pull it off are real light. The weapons will be probably the hardest part to get. Now, the perks themselves, of course, as you would expect, all the heavy gunner perks and lock and load under strength so I can have this maximum DPS traveling pharmacy for my camps I basically run it on every build I like a good hefty amount of camps in my backpack max out concentrated fire yeah you could go with rank 1 with a little bit of DPS loss but again max DPS build you can fine tune it for a little bit less DPS and more quality of life if you want to then Cola Nut is a must and fireproof. Just one perk for tankiness. It is full health, you don't need much perks to improve the tankiness, so Cola Nut is a must. This build, as you can see, is powered by alcohols and colas, and this is es essential. Without Cola Nut and Party Boy, it will be really hard to pull similar DPS. Happy Go Lucky, essential as well. Synergy explain in details about Nuka Dark and those three perks in separate video you can find on my channel, Nuka Cola Dark Secrets. Uh, then strength in numbers when you play for a team and for max DPS you should play on a team. I will use this build absolutely solo too, but it's always a little bit less DPS if you go solo. If you want to go solo then strength in numbers not needed. Then tenderizer for max DPS and someone is actually sharing it but I have my own. So tenderizer for max DPS must be in here. Then intelligence. Power user, you can think it's quality of life, but it is not really. The cost infusion course to pull VATs with heavy guns is so huge without this perk that it's like a must. Then stabilize for damage. Gunsmith to increase durability of my weapons. You can, that's why I said 10 special is required, not 15. You can play without Gunsmith and drop Intelligence to 6 points, so it's absolutely possible. Gunsmith do not affect your DPS, unless weapon breaks mid-fight, then you could say do affect it. Uh, then we have Agility, through Hiker is a must, you need hefty amount of alcohols and colas always on you, and coffees. Coffees on top of that, so yeah, that's a must. Enforcer, rank 1. For occasional crippling with pepper shaker bone survival just in case your health drop gunfu for maximum dps adrenaline max out that's that's for maximum dps normally i would run those specs as rank one not today today we are after dps bloody mess grim reaper sprint 
rank 2 because there was no more space to squeeze in rank 3. So we have rank 2 Grim Reaper Sprint, still good. Better criticals for more DPS. Curator to keep our bubble heads and DPS running for longer. Uh, then critical savvy and good with salt. This one for my food is actually not essential. You could play without it, but you cannot drop luck. You need this luck. Uh, for ease of playing with criticals. To be honest, for just a boss fight, maybe you could drop three points from luck. It's not recommended, but possible. So yeah, that's possible. Uh, next, the gear, the hardest part to pull off is the gear, the weapon. What do you need? Currently, my driver, the maximum DPS, perfect roll is this two-shot Gatling Plasma. But it's only a top roll for next two weeks. After a two shot will be nerfed on energy weapons, it will no longer be my top roll. And I'm already looking for replacements. I have some candidates, not perfect weapons yet, but something to use. So if you are watching this video later, you will be looking for anti armor, less AP cost. Less AP cost is absolutely essential. Not only greatly reduces the cost in VATs, but in the same as it's reducing the AP cost. It is reducing fusion core drain, so it is absolutely essential. For the prefix, it can be anti-armor, aristocrats, or you can even go with junkies if you have nothing against addictions. Uh, the second star, I have bashing damage. That's not a good one. What you are looking for is vast crit damage, eventually faster fire rate. And this is the key weapon. Gatling Plasma is the main driver of this build. That's the key weapon. The secondary weapon for everyday use is the Plasma Caster, and I'm rocking here Vampire. It could be Anti-Armor, it could be Aristocrats, whatever. The important part is I have Vats crit feels faster, so I can have critical every other shot, even if my luck is 23. With 23 luck, I can have critical every other shot. So I can simply use Camp Buff and Simple Food Item to boost my luck for 23 and use this weapon with crit every other shot. Vats hit chance, very handy, not, not essential. Vampire, as I said, not essential. Essential part in case of this weapon, faster crit meter. So two weapons and you have this build covered. As a bonus, I'm carrying chainsaw for those daily ops when you need to kill with melee, Peppa shaker for crippling, Cold shoulder for those dailies that still are in here. But essential weapons, Gatling Plasma, Plasma Caster. Those two cover everything you really need. Mutations. There is a very short list. Bird Bones, Eagle Eyes, Herbivore, Herd Mentality, Marsupial and Speed Demon. The reason for this list being so short, I'm not running Class Freak. As you can see, full negatives. But those negatives are not really big against this build. So I'm good. I don't need class freak. As well, you probably noticed I'm not running star genes. So absolutely no rad away usage on this build. What I'm using is Brahmin milk exclusively. And if rats accumulate a little bit more, it's the Nuka grape. So Nuka grape, if rats go a little bit higher, Brahmin milk, if less, never let your rats really feel too much or you will get bonus mutations you do not want. So that's a little bit more management if you don't run star genes, but in the same time, more space and the luck for more useful perks. About armor itself, what I'm recommending is ammo weight, as then you can carry a lot of cores and those are quite light. Eventually, if not ammo weight, you could go with weapon weight or just whatever. Actually, armor is the least important. The legendary effects on armor is the least important topic. So just having a full set of power armor is enough. As you can replace gunsmith with batteries included and get the ammo weight down. So it is possible. Now, under armor backpacks as you know do not work in power armor so it's not a topic for this video at all the most important food is nuka dark every time i pop it 
I have insane boost to my luck and I can pull out huge DPS. Second very important food on this build is Blight Soup. As this one boosts your crit damage by 50%, that's the base, but if you are a herbivore, it goes up to 125% on a team. So that's a lot of extra critical damage. The food that helps me achieve the minimum luck for the plasma caster is chalice feed. So this one giving free luck, easy to craft. So chalice feed being popped, the bite zoop. Those are the essential buffs for the boss fight. You go for a new Dark for insane boost for a short duration. I could probably talk more about fully boosting when I will be killing those bosses. We have essential for the build. Now, how it works, let me demonstrate on most likely some Scourge Beast. Now, how I can achieve damage versus the Scourge Beast? One thing is Nuka Dark, second, coffee. I need to pop around 12 coffee to sustain Gatling Plasma in VATS continuously. So let's try to bring her attention, if I can. There we go. Then that. Then a lot of coffee. Okay, she's running away. I need to be a little bit closer to get VATS. Then I can get VATS head and criticals. There we go. That's how it works on max DPS mode. It's amazing versus bosses too. I can annihilate all the scorch. That's why coffee is still running. You see what's happening when the coffee is running. Your AP basically refills even when you are firing in VATS. So that's why coffee. And if you are paying attention to my fusion core, it is draining like crazy when I'm using it like that. So it's quite expensive build to run. But in the same time, if you do the strategy with workshops like Thunder Mountain Power Plant, Mononga Power Plant, Poseidon Energy Plant and produce some cores, you will be good. As you can see, I have 26 cores and all those cores comes from the last live stream that I grabbed those workshops. So I grab workshops once and I'm good for weeks. Therefore, it is not as bad to sustain as you could think it will be. So this is the build with Plasma Caster is even, even easier than that. So most people know how to use Plasma Caster. It's way, way easier. Only the Gatling Plasma is the secret ultimate weapon to pull the full DPS. We pop some ramen milk and remove rats. Here we go. Healthy, ready for action. Next Twitch stream, I will do some solo content and you will see how successful I will be to taking down bosses like Colossus. That's the toughest. I think I will be going after Colossus. That's the toughest one. We'll see how fast can I take it down. And that being said, thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.